Hello guys, welcome to the studio. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at how to avoid the audio clicks when you are doing your sample editing. So, let's go. Welcome back. Like we mentioned earlier, we're going to be taking a look at how to avoid those audio clicks when you are doing sample editing. It's important to know that doing sample editing, um, those annoying sounds that come before or after your, you've actually cut out the part that you need from that particular um, wave or whatever the file you got onto your Akai MPC, you notice that most of the time, at the end or at the beginning, there's usually kind of like a disturbing sound that you do not like or you do not want. And you mean most of the time people look for, okay, how best can this particular uh, signal be eradicated? Uh, this has forced a lot of people to go straight to using envelopes to edit the fading and the fade out. You know, they just have to silence the end, silence the beginning of their sample so that they can get a very clean audio, you know, that will not click at the end. You know, hear that click sound. But you can actually eradicate that to the minimum you know, uh, uh, so the barest minimum actually, while you are cutting or chopping that particular sample into pieces to take the one you want, you can actually silence that right from that moment, which will save you a lot of, you know, stress trying to do that with envelopes and all that. That's basically what we're about here. We teach you how you can maximize, you know, your workflow by working smarter. The tips and the tricks that will let you work, you know, uh, faster and smarter anytime you are using your Akai MPC devices. So if you are new here, kindly subscribe and um, you know, hit the like button. This helps us to grow as a channel. So now let's go. We'll just go to sample edit interface and from there, we'll take it up. Uh, sample edit, I can just do it directly and select that particular one I want to edit. Um, okay. Okay, let me try this, this break, old school, right? Let's even listen to what we have here first. Okay, nice one. That's me just playing around. So as you can see, this is what we're going to be working with. So let's go ahead and edit it. Um, we're just going to chop off what we need from here, you know, this from this start point, move somewhere around here. I could just, you know, not waste your time. I could just drag the end point here. Then come to trim. Remember, if you need to know how to make use of these um, parts to, you know, let your workflow be faster when you are doing sample editing, uh, you might want to check up, you know, one of our videos. We pretty much covered how that works and um, you're going to find it interesting. Everything that is color coded here, they are basically what they do. They have their usage, especially to make your work easier when you are doing sample editing. So uh, let's do it this way. Let's listen to what we just been able to cut off right now. Before you even extract, what we're trying to do is trying to get a, a very clean and silent from maybe like the beginning or the end, especially from the end as much as possible. So. I don't know if you can hear that. You hear that last click. So let me change again. Let's go look for somewhere else again. You keep you keep hearing that. You see that that, part, that last part. That part. That is the click we're talking about. You can actually er eradicate it right from here. Most of the time, eight or nine out of ten. You know you can eradicate that sound from here without having to go and be doing that in the envelopes ah yes and we'll, we actually covered one of our videos how you can do that on the envelopes but to make your work a lot faster let's work smarter let's do it right over here now what is the secret to doing that notice something each time i am changing the end using this cue link which is just by one it's incremental by one on the time bar it's actually moving also in bits of one as you can see i'm reducing it one four six six one eight six one seven six one six one five just 
by it's moving just by one you know point of this b of this timeline now if i use this it will move by 10 right 590 i mean 570 560 now this that is moving by one that's the one i wanted to use i'm taking it to 600 let me check let me listen to the beat again you can see here that the secret to that is you holding your shift and pressing zero snap this is the master key that zero snap will make your work a lot easier when you are chopping like you are actually extracting some part of the song that you need to eradicate that click at that you know that click sound here at the end of your samples that you cut out before you even try to export them how does it work what zero snap does for you is instead of a jog wheel to not be moving at its you know prescribed um, pace it will be jumping to the to the nearest possible spot that has the least amount of sound coming out. That is wave pattern in terms of it will jump to where it is the least amount of sound coming out within that range. Let's do it this way. Now I've just you know I had to just you know zoom this one in as well so that I can see it a lot. The zero spot for this particular um wave pattern the one maybe i'm guessing this is odd this is a um, stereo left and right the wave pattern for this is actually that line you can see in the middle that white line the same thing the the, the the zero spot for this is what you can see here and the zero spot for this is what you can see here now you can see that here that we've already selected is not a zero spot because there is a an activity that is above the same thing here that's why you keep hearing that snap sound because there's still a sound that is kind of like in progress there. What you are trying to do and what you are trying to locate is where that your wave pattern crosses exactly intersects with your zero lines. And that spot, you might not be able to get it by yourself per se, but when you enable zero snap, all you need to do is just turn your jog wheel. As you can see, your jog wheel will ensure or you, you can turn your knob any which one, whichever one, it will ensure that now your that is your marker always jump to the nearest and the next zero spot. If I play this one now, you see you can't hear it. If I bring it here, you can't hear it. Next one. So let me reduce it a lot so you can see how it jumps. You can see it's jumping. A lot and as you can see this is the x1 but it's no longer moving one by one because from here zero snap has been enabled so it's trying to locate the nearest point available that will make the least sound and that my friend is how you cut or chop off your samples to make sure you get the zero spot that to eradicate that audio clicks this will help you a, a great deal when you're trying to just, you just got a sample, you need to cut off something out of it, you know, and we'll extract it to somewhere else and continue using it. You can imagine how many, maybe like minutes, you are going to spend to try and, you know, silence something like, let me disable this zero snap. And then we'll do this. You can already hear. You see. You can imagine how many minutes you're going to spend to try to eradicate that using your envelope by silencing it, let's mute it, let's reduce the volume on the end and all those kind of things. But you can easily just do that from here and save yourself the stress of having to re-edit after an initial edit. And you know, that's just basically, that solves the whole problem. You can hear, see that? Let's go. Most of the places, nine out of 10 when you, when you select, you are definitely going to land in a place that has a sound. See, but with your zero snap enabled, you are most likely going to land in a place that does not have any sound. And that, my friend, is how to eradicate a sound. So, um, that'll be all for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you in the next one.